I'm a raw ale. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Hans and this is my channel about beer and home brewing. Are you interested in beer and how to become a better brewer? Consider becoming a subscriber and hit that little bell so you don't miss anything when I post a video like this one. So, <sighs> today I'm going to talk about this raw ale which I brewed like um, six months ago. It has been conditioning in the keg and it's ready today for the YouTube channel. Uh, we're also gonna go, kind of go through the recipe on this one. Yeah, I have the recipe, so let's go through the recipe. I'm gonna taste the beer and yeah, talk about it. Hang in there, guys. So, here's the beer. What is a royal? I did have a flash. Gonna have a look at that. It's a nice yellow color. And that head, don't know if you can get it on camera. Sick. It's like uh, uh, meringue. It's like a meringue head. Okay, so. What is a raw ale? This beer is a no boil and it also is a no boil and I didn't add any hops to it in the boil. It was dry hopped but there was I think I dried hop it on day three so there was no hops in the boil and uh, there were no boil. There were no hops in the boil because there were no boil. And yeah. Okay. I'm gonna sort this out. I do have some footage for you. So we're gonna go through the uh, the footage and uh, then we'll come back and taste the beer. And yeah, I promise you guys, I'm gonna sort all of this out on this raw ale with Kvike. So let's have a look at the brew footage. Hops. That's a lot of grains. Uh, became a little bit flowery on top here because it got caught in the uh, mill. But as you see, the rest has a good crush to it. I'm gonna start this at 65C. Our temp is up to 70, 70, 71, 72 it reads now, but it's more like 70, something like that, I think. Or maybe not. So, what did I say? 65. lot in there so maybe go with 700 watts today okay Whew. haven't added any uh, acid or something like that to this because um, we did add the acidulated malt instead And uh, I'm experimenting with the quantities I need for my water of acidulated malt. And of course, um, the rest of the grain bill is a parameter as well. So I will try to uh, figure out what fits my water when. Uh, I have a better clue on what to look for from my own experiments. I will of course share them here on the channel as usual. 
but I want to try for myself. Uh, but uh, last time I used 3.3%, uh, so that's what I'm going with this time also. Uh, but you can't take that number to yourself and use it because uh, it depends on uh, your water, on your pH, on your water's alkalinity and on your drain bill. So, but I will experiment with it and see what I find out and share it with you guys. Uh, there's gonna be a lot in here. This system is uh, for up to seven kilos of malt. Um, and today we're doing 7.5, so it's not super much more, but uh, it means that I will be using some extra water as well and that will uh, take some space but I think we will be fine especially for this double beer experiment maybe we could have added even more make it a really thick mash Okay, I'm gonna add the rest. All the grains are in and we still have some headspace. I'm gonna look at the consistency of the uh, mash. So I'm gonna give this a really good stir now and then I will hook up the uh, circulation and as usual we will come back, give it another stir, check the pH and so on. Okay. Okay, second run with using uh, acidulated malt, 3.3% uh, of the grain bill and it took me to 5.2. Awesome. So we will uh, do uh, Nothing more of the pH adjustments to this. Cool. Okay guys, time to taste starter. <sighs> Smells nice. This is at room temp. Yeah, it's nice. Cheers. Oops. Took some hot wort uh, directly out of this one. Uh, I'm gonna add this to the starter uh, to bump up the temperature and to uh, uh, get the yeast going. Um, it has to do with the quike. So, uh, and I'm aiming to pitch out. I'm aiming to pitch at about. 28 to 30 degrees somewhere there and uh, this is 65 and the starter is room temp don't want to kill the starter so uh, ah, let's try it added the hot cup into the half decanter starter left a little bit more this time uh, it's a little bit warmer don't think I killed anything by doing this so now the yeasties have some uh, sugars to wake up on again. So I'm gonna pitch the whole of this later on. Okay, it's time to uh, transfer the, the wort from here, the unsparked wort from this vessel into this one. So let's go let it drain. I'm gonna go through a hose because um, I don't want to uh, put any more uh, oxygen in there, air in there uh, than I have to at this stage because um, I'm gonna fill as much as possible over. Then I'm gonna top up with uh, some uh, room temp water which I boiled yesterday. Okay, hose is on. Uh, 
against the side there so we don't have too much splashing. Uh, yeah, so let's transfer this one over. Okay, we're on. No hops yet. Nothing uh, have reached over 65 Celsius. Uh, mash time was a little bit longer. So this, I think this is gonna take a while because we're gonna let this drain off. And then we will uh, add the water I'm heating up for the second brew. Uh, I'm gonna put something over here so I don't get uh, so much wild yeast to enter. Okay. Okay, the <laughs> idea with uh, less aeration this way wasn't uh, quite thought through. There will be some aeration of the wort. Uh, I'm gonna let this drip off now. See if we can get any more of it. Um, so, uh, what could I have done better? There is uh, an attachment to this system where I can raise the uh, malt pipe up uh, a little by little. So maybe next time I will try using that method instead. Let's see how much wort we have. Can't find the lead mark. We have 14 liters Keeping uh, the starter hot with the heating pad Aiming for like 28 30 degrees uh, When I pitch it into uh, the wort so I want to have a uh, as equal temperature as Possible. As you see, pitching a little uh, wart on top of the starter worked. We have a uh, Krausen forming 27.9 degrees. So we're good. Okay, there's still wart coming off of this quite slowly. We have uh, about 16 and a half liters so I'm gonna let it sit yes for a little while to see what happens and it's time to start the next brew okay I'm gonna call it there I have just under 17 liters of wort uh, there's still wort coming but uh, this is taking too long need to get on with the second brew so okay call it there so let's top this up to 21 liters so here's some water I boiled yesterday cool down to room temp so let's add the, that gonna fill it up to uh, 21 liters as I said uh, and the starter is about one liter now so that gives us about 22 liters. I will give this a stir inside and we'll take a measurement and we'll take a temperature reading and all of that and we're aiming to pitch at about 28 30 degrees Celsius. Inside gonna stir this up gently. It looks kind of murky and this wort was never over 65 C. I'm gonna take a sample to get a gravity reading and then I'm gonna hook up the temperature and uh, yeah temperature probe and all that uh, in the corner there behind the sub I'm gonna have to get rid of that one I'm gonna ferment this with my heating system if you haven't watched that video uh, please do kind of a cool way to uh, ferment under with uh, 
specialty yeasts like this one all stirred up. Let's take a reading. Or let's take a sample first. Okay. OG1051. I hooked up the temperature. We're over 42 degrees still. Got this idea. Attached some cooling clamps to the sides here. Let's see if I can fit one over here as well. I think I have some more. I'm not that worried if the beer sitting with no yeast on it. Cause look at the Krausen of the starter. So when I hit the wort with the starter, it's gonna take off immediately. This starter has been uh, pre-made uh, for um, what is it, four days ago. Uh, and uh, as you saw earlier in the video, I poured a cup of wort. And this was the strong wort before, I, it, before it was uh, diluted. So uh, we have a very active starter here with a lot of yeasties. 28.7 degrees. I uh, was aiming for 28 to 30. Um, so I want this to be around that temperature as well. I found some more clamps. So uh, all around now uh, 42.9. We're sitting at 31.6 now after a few hours and I think, yeah, I will pitch it. Can't wait any longer, have to make some dinner. <laughs> First I will oxygenate it with the oxygen and then I will pitch the starter. Next morning and fermentation is well on the way. Uh, it has pushed the temp up a bit. Here you can see we have Krausen and uh, the airlock going crazy. 24 hours in, 31.4 degrees Celsius. It's dry hopping time. 100 grams of mosaic hops. Krausen. And we're done. Ta -da -da! Okay, so you want to know about the scream. The screaming is a tradition. Uh, Kvike is uh, like a Norwegian farmhouse. Yeast. And this was fermented with the Garden Stordal Kvike. Some people don't know this, but their Kvike ain't a yeast strain. Kvike is often a number of different yeasts together, and there's different Kvikes. So this was fermented with the Garden Stordal Kvike. Back to the screaming, yeah. So the tradition is that you, when you add the yeast to your wort, you scream so no nasties will get into your wart to drive off the, the bad spirit. Did it work? Let's give it a nose. Okay, it's uh, very bready. And uh, here I get It's almost like a pie, dessert, custard, some fruitiness, very 
bready, biscuity, creamy. If that's a flavor, of course it is. Okay. Um, cheers, guys. Going to dive in. We're going to talk about this beer a little bit more and um, talk about maybe why the uh, footage was a little bit weird. Going to sort this out because I actually made two beers and this was beer number one. But let's try it first. Cheers. Mm, very nice. As a sweetness, really good mouthfeel. Um, you get some mango in there. And I can tell you this beer really needed some time to condition. But it's so fresh still after six months. Some sweetness and there's something magical about this yeast and the way I brewed with it was because of this note. We're gonna go through the notes. I'm gonna try to translate them. I think that's it's the notes on the yeast are written by a Swedish guy in Norwegian, and then a Swedish guy gonna try to translate what the Swede wrote in Norwegian back to Swedish and then to English, yeah, you know it's gonna be a disaster, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So I have a very balanced beer with the sweetness and the bitterness, but there was no hops until two days of fermentation and no other means of uh, bittering. It's a very interesting brew. Let's talk a little bit more about the brew day. What I decided to do was to do a two beers brew from one mash. And my brew brewing system is said to hold like seven kilos of malt. So I try to push that. I push that up to uh, 7.5 kilos and uh, Let's go through the, the grain bill also, so you have that. But you have to count in that this is for two beers. The first beer I just uh, mashed and pulled off the wort. And then I added uh, new water on top and did another hour of mashing and did a mash out. So. This was uh, held for like 66 C. Yes, I would put it up in Fahrenheit. Here you go, Fahrenheit. For, I don't know, 75 minutes, 90 minutes, something like that. And um, then I just pulled off the wort and um, filled up to like 23 liters. You saw it in the video with some water I have boiled the day before. And yeah, on the grains I filled up with new water, which I heated up and um, yeah, did a normal brew with that. I did a one hour mash and um, did a mash out and uh, sparged it and boiled it with hops and did a more like a traditional lager with it, with pearl hops. And that came out like a very good summer brew and it's gone by now. It was a very hot summer. I don't gonna tell you where the beer went. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, grain bill, but this is for two beers. So I did put this recipe up in the Dr. Holmes recipe book on the Patreon site in the other beer section, I call it the two beer grain bill. And I actually lowered like the efficiency in the recipe to 38% because what you get here is the second brew, but the grain bill is the same. So for this beer, I 
did uh five kilos of pilsner like 65 ish percent one kilos of munich 13 percent 750 grams of wheat malt 10 percent 300 grams of carapale 4 percent and 250 grams of acid malt, that's 3.3 percent and 200 grams of melugium malt, that's like just under 3 percent and there was no hops in this one put off the wort after mashing and then topped it up with the, the cold water and it did get a little hot so as you saw, I shield it down, put some ice clamps all around it and uh, try to get the temperature down. But the, uh, the Quike Geist really likes the heat. Uh, the uh, Ebergarden Store Doll Geist. Max temperature 42C and in Fahrenheit. So this works best between 28 to 30 celsius and in fahrenheit okay i won't translate this but i will give you some of it this gist is uh, known to put out quite a bitterness so you should really be uh, gentle with the hops and the, the guy here, I don't know who he is, is, he's called Jens in this. I guess he's the one we get the quike from. Not the one I get the quike from. I got this quike from Espen at Earl, 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 at Espen, from Espen. Did I say Espen? From Earl Tid on the Norwegian channel. Cheers, Espen. I'm gonna put a link down to Espen's channel down below. Thank you for the gist. Yes, this quite comes from Jens Auge Övre Burst. Burst. Sorry for the pronunciation. So, Jens, which disease comes from originally? Only does dry hopping when you use it. So, I did the same. And it's really worked out well. No boil. No hops, no like nothing except dry hopping and screaming and pitching the yeast and maybe something else. No, yeah, conditioning. Um, in the beginning, this beer was quite overwhelming. I think that you should boil your beer or condition it for a very long time. On the other hand, this beer tastes super fresh. After six months, screaming flavor. Very good on the nose. It's a very nice beer, but it needed a very long time of conditioning because it was, you should have seen like the, the foam when it was young. You could cut it with a knife and not get down to the beer. It was so thick. And I guess that is from not boiling it. I did a raw ale and it turned out really, really well. I didn't know what's going to happen. But hey, I like to do like these experiment things. So, and um, they often turn out good. So, so guys try to push the limits, try to do some crazy stuff. It will be beer, and usually, if you just wrap your head around it, it will be good. No promises, of course, but uh, try it. You could use like the, the same procedure with another yeast, maybe um, not with the uh, no hops before dry hop, but you could do um, like mash hopping. Because if you're gonna hold the beer for an, uh, 
for an hour, an hour and a half in a mash. Of course, you're going to get some bitterness from it. And you ain't going to, if you ain't going to boil it, you will have a lot of flavors from it. So you could, yes, would be like an amazing thing to do like an IPA this way, where you just pound a lot of hops in the mash and yeah, do a royal. Royal IPA or New England IPA, maybe. Yeah, because then you don't need all of the bitterness. But this guy talking about New England IPA, one more time. The bitterness is maybe a little bit more even than uh, a New England IPA. Of course, it depends on the beer, but the way I think of New England IPA, which shouldn't be as bitter as an IPA. So this is like in the middle ground between uh, uh, New England IPA and an IPA, I think, bitterness wise. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, almost out of the beer. If you found this video interesting, give it a thumbs up. If you're into beer and home brewing, post a video like this one. If you want even more content and recipes and so, there's my Patreon page to check out, and of course, all the back catalog of my other videos. So, cheers, guys, and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.